Welcome to my channel. This is an indication of some of the things that I cover on a regular basis in my videos. If you haven't already subscribed, please feel free to do so. And don't forget to click the little bell so that you'll get notified of future videos. Please feel free to share my videos on your social media. And I hope you enjoy the video which follows. Well, in my last video where I showed the, the chickens out free-ranging, and there they are again out free-ranging, I had a request uh, from somebody if I would do like a tutorial on chicken raising and uh, various requirements, so I thought I might give that a try. I'm not trying to say that I am a chicken expert and what I say is the only way to go. Uh, I have kept hens for many years. This current uh, time of keeping hens has been going on for nine years, but prior to that uh, in the 1970s and up into the 1980s, oh I don't know, I had probably more than 50 birds at a time. I had quite a large coop and used to sell eggs locally and that sort of thing. So. I've experienced a lot of the tragedies made about all the mistakes that you can make, so I thought I would give some pointers on the way that I do it. If you are somebody that also raises chickens, you do something different and you want to make a comment, please feel free to do so. As I said, I'm not trying to put myself forward as any kind of an expert, just talking from my experience. Well, <laughs> i got competition going on here now. Hens are deciding to squawk. As you know, I have three coops. This is the first one that I built uh, nine years ago. And a couple of years later, there used to be a small greenhouse here. I, it was, had gone way past its life. I tore it down. It was sitting on a, a base made of concrete patio tiles. And so I built this coop with the same uh, footprint and used the concrete patio tiles as the floor inside. And then later I got quail. I'll give you a better look at this later. I have some, uh, I'm going to be doing the rest of this as rather than live video competing with chickens, uh, talking over some uh, pictures that I've taken over the years. But this, uh, this was built for the quail and I do have much better photographs of it. In the wintertime, I cover it with that plastic because it's just, it's open in the summer uh, and has hardware cloth so that nothing can get in. But uh, I cover it for the winter so the wind doesn't get in there. Plans are though this summer is to buy, you know, probably quarter inch plywood and uh, prepare it for the plywood for, instead of using plastic next fall, I'll put the plywood on. It will still be plenty light in there because the roof is uh, that translucent fiberglass. So it's, it's always nice and bright and light in there. But I'm getting tired of chasing the plastic around in winter storms. I'll give you a couple of more shots here and then we'll go look at some photographs. Talk a little bit about the enclosure. I don't know the exact measurements of it anymore. Uh, it's a good eight feet tall. I made it out of um, pressure treated two by fours, and it is covered with a um, fencing. I think the openings in the fencing are two inches by three inches, galvanized steel fencing, so that nothing can get in. That also goes across the top, and it is buried around the exterior, oh, I don't know, seven, eight inches, something into the ground around it in case anything like a raccoon decided to uh, dig its way in there. So that's one way of keeping the yard uh, secure. Uh, years ago with my other hens, I had everything attack I could possibly attack, from coyotes to raccoons. And so when I built these, I put a lot, quite a bit of extra money into it, and I've often said that I built Fort Knox for hens. Now this is a side view of that second coop that I built, and it also has an enclosed yard, same idea. Uh, not as large, but it's a good one and a half times the size of the actual coop. So it, even if it's bad weather, it gives them a place they can go out and exercise. I did put, a, I had a couple of sheets of plywood left over, 
and I put that on as a roof over part of it, and I find that works really well. Well, in heavy rainstorms, they still go out and don't get wet, but in the wintertime, uh, the snow accumulates on top of that instead of down on the, the ground, and they, even though it's quite cold, sometimes they still like to go out and scratch around. So once again, that's what I did there, and the same covering, it's got the same fencing, and it's also buried in the ground. And so far, I've never had a problem with anything getting in. It's a funny looking thing when it's covered with plastic. I kind of like the looks of it when I get the plastic off of it. And as I say, there will be better photographs of it coming up here. I can't take the plastic off here until, well, almost May at least. We still get some very cold, windy nights. And that's just got three quail and, and two banties in it right now. Eventually, it'll have more banty hens in it. Maybe even this summer, I'm, I'm contemplating maybe getting a, an Old English Game rooster and putting my four Old English Game hens in there with a the rooster to breed some more. I'm quite taken with that breed. But now let's go look at some photographs and I'll try to answer some of the questions that were in that comment. But to start off with, I'll show you one of my big mistakes. Do not buy one of these. I, it comes flat packed like something from Ikea. It's not from Ikea. I just think they're all made in China. You find them being sold by various different companies under their brand name, but they're all the same. I put it together. I don't know. When you look at a photograph of it, I didn't pay attention to the dimensions of the thing, I guess. I was so disappointed in the size of it to begin with. You're supposed to keep up to four chickens in that. I couldn't condemn four chickens, at least not four standard-sized chickens, to live in that little thing. But that's only the tip of the iceberg with it. I put it together the fall before I was going to get my chickens in the following spring. I, at that time, I thought I would just get a few birds. This thing didn't last a week on my property. The first windstorm, it tumbled over and smashed. I put it back together as best I could, but I determined I would never use it. So in my humble opinion, do not buy one of these. Well, if you're planning to get hens and you have a garden shed or something like that on your property that you can repurpose, by all means do it. The hens will love it. It hasn't got to be fancy. I am not a carpenter. This is the beginning construction of my first coop. I had never built anything before in my life, and I mean that sincerely. I always was amazed at how anybody could take a pile of lumber and, and turn it into a building. I just determined over the winter that I was gone to make my own coop. Um, if you can see the metal pieces at the top of the rafters and then there are metal pieces down where the rafters fasten onto the wall, I did buy those as a kit and it came with like a one sheet of uh, instructions for making a, uh, a building out of it, not necessarily a, a chicken coop. It was just meant to be a shed of some sort. It's generally believed that you should have at least two to three square feet of space for each hen. So that determines the size of a building that you're going to get. Um, you can go a little bit smaller than that. Uh, I wouldn't, well, I say a little bit smaller. I wouldn't go below two square feet per bird. Three square feet is even better, more space for them. So that, you know, like you determine how many birds you're going to get, and that determines what size your building has to be. Well, this is the almost finished product before I put the uh, secure yard on the front of it. As you can see, I have two windows, and those open, and they have screens on them. And over top of the screens, I put hardware cloth, uh, just to make sure that a raccoon or something couldn't rip the screen out and get in there with the birds. The windows are, I think they're called playhouse windows or whatever, something that you would buy to put in a, uh, a child's playhouse. Uh, very easy to install. You cut a hole in the wall, there's a flange around the window and you nail the window in through the on the flange and then I put trim around it to make it look a little better. But those are available, uh, I believe, on eBay, probably where I got mine. They install very easily. 
On the roof, I put asphalt shingles. Um, you could use rolled roofing or whatever you wanted to use, metal, even the, the, the new metal roofs and whatever. be more permanent, but mine so far has stood up very well over nine years. And as you can see, it's on uh, those concrete piers. They just sit right on the ground. They're, they're meant to be used for a patio, I think. But they've, they've also done very well. The building is still quite level on them. This photo was taken the first winter, and the uh, greenhouse is still there. That's where the second coop went, probably the following year. I have, over the years, I've had many people ask me about, do I give them supplemental heat in the wintertime? And no, I don't. From what I have read, uh, they'll be much healthier without it. Uh, it's very important that the coop not have any drafts. Um, you don't want wind blowing through or whatever. But they'll be much healthier if, if you don't supplement with heat. I think it also is a great help if you have your coop up to close to maximum, maximum occupancy. Uh, body heat uh, is quite a help in that regard. The number of hens in there sharing their, their body heat. But they always come through the winter very well. I, I rarely ever, well, I've never lost a young bird. I've had several birds die of, of old age during the winter or whatever, but the, the, it doesn't seem to bother them. It's like in selecting your breed of chicken, there are some things that you want to remember if you are in a cold climate like mine. Um, there are places in Canada much colder than where I live, but I have seen it get down to minus 22 Celsius here which isn't all that cold compared to other areas. But the variety of birds that have those floppy combs on their heads, um, I would avoid those. They frostbite in the wintertime and uh, must cause the bird pain, I would think. But uh, I've never had it kill a bird, but earlier in my chicken raising career, I had several varieties that had these floppy combs and there was always frost damage to the comb in the winter time so I no longer get those varieties. This was taken five years ago, the worst winter of my lifetime. I think also one of the ways of keeping the birds warmer in the winter time is a great insulation of snow. I was really worried that my roofs wouldn't stand up to the weight, but everything did make it through the winter, but it was an amazing winter. We had a blizzard just about every weekend for, it seemed like forever, five or six weeks anyway. My coops both have roosts in them. I use one inch hardwood dowels that you buy at the hardware store, but you haven't got to be that fancy. You can use anything that they can perch on. Um, I've seen people use natural tree branches that they put in there for the birds to, to roost on. This photograph here is taken several years into my coop. Those, that's the first flock of Chanticleers just starting to roost. But as you can see, there are some young uh, uh, bantams up on the top, sitting on the, on the ledge at the top. So I'll get a look at this next photo here. You can put all the roosts in that you want to put, and the birds are going to spend the night where they want to spend the night. This is my first flock when they were just starting to roost. They used the roost that I had there as a hood of a stepladder so they could fly up into the rafters. And most of those birds all of their life continued to roost up in the rafters. This is the third coop under construction. And I did buy a set of plans for this off of a site that I found on the internet. You paid for them and then they let you download their, their plans. It was quite simple to make and I really liked the looks of it. As I said before this autumn, I plan to uh, buy plywood to close it in with. I'm getting tired of chasing plastic all over the place in the wintertime when we have our storms. It has, a, as you can see, a closed-in compartment. I have some roosts in there. Um, my birds that are in there now, they go up in there to lay their eggs, but they prefer to roost 
out in the open area, so I'm glad that I have it closed in. And I also put one of those Playhouse windows in it. As far as nest boxes go for the birds to lay the eggs in, you can certainly make your own. I've seen everything from buckets nailed on the wall to uh, various different kinds of, of wooden boxes. It all works very well. I went with a commercially made product. Uh, I think this might have been the smallest. I don't know if there's one that's four nests or not, but this has got six. I have rarely seen more than three of them used. Um, a lot more nests than I needed. I've had different people ask me how many nests you need for how many hens and whatever. I have no idea what to tell you. I have hens that have never laid in a nest. They prefer to lay, they build a nest under these nests and lay down there. I'll show you the nest that I'm using in the bantams in a moment. Some of them do use it, um, but it isn't like they each go to their own nest. They'll pick two or three that are their, they, they determine are the nest they're going to use, and they'll all use those nests. I've seen two hens in them at a time, having laid their egg and just sitting there relaxing afterward. This is the type of nest that I'm using in the coop with the bandy hens, and they like them. They go up in them. They like they like to get broody and go up, them, up in them, and, and they will lay eggs in there then and sit on the eggs. Most of my banties prefer to build a nest on the ground and lay their eggs in the corner of the coop. I don't know what you ever do to convince them to do something different. I haven't been successful at it, whatever it is. It doesn't bother me. They, they, they always pick a nice clean place and put uh, lots of wood shavings and things in their nest and lay their eggs in the corner, but you have to go looking for them. I use this type of feeder in both of my chicken coops. It suspends. I, I use a chain, a lightweight chain to suspend it with. It will hold 25 pounds of feed. I never fill them. Uh, maybe a quarter full is about as much as I ever put in them. Uh, just I, I find if you give them a lot of feed they'll scratch it out and it goes for waste. I feed a 17% uh, layer mash, layer food. Uh, it comes either in a mash, which is almost like a, a powder, or a crumble, which is small pieces, or pellets. I always get the crumble because I've always had uh, bantams, and I don't think they would be able to eat the, the pellets. They're quite large, so I stick with the crumble. The mash itself, uh, I find far too much waste in it. Uh, I don't know why, but they tend to dump that out of the feeder onto the ground. They they prefer to have little little pieces as in the crumble or the pellets, at least that's what I find that mine prefer. I always keep feed available at all times to them. I know some people don't. They, they feed on a daily basis. And, uh, that may be a good method, I don't know, but what I've always done is, is to keep food available. If I'm going away overnight or for a couple of days, um, if I, as long as they've got lots of food and water, they're fine. I just close them in. I don't uh, let them out into their run because I don't have anybody there to close the run up for me at night. If I'm going away for a longer period of time, I have an excellent next-door neighbor. <laughs> Over the years, he's taken care of my hens for me on several occasions. He gets free eggs, and I always try to bring him back something from the trip that I'm on. One of the other questions asked was about these automatic door openers, uh, so that I think they work on a solar electric cell. When the sun comes up, the little door opens so the hens can go out in the yard. Not for my liking. I want to be able to let them out when I want them out and to keep them closed in when I want them closed in. I, it never made sense to me. The little doors that I use that slide up and down, I just tie a wire to them through through eye hooks, and so you just pull the wire and that opens a little door, it slides up in the, the track that it's in. Those are actually from these automatic uh, doors. Uh, you can buy the various parts for them, and I, I just buy the little door itself. The mechanism that automatically opens things up just doesn't interest me at all. In wintertime I use an electric fountain, 
water fountain. Um, I think they hold about three gallons. I think they're I think it's pretty much standard. They're 100 watts, but they also are thermostatically controlled. Uh, so if you have warm days, it, uh, it isn't heating the water constantly. They work very well. Uh, I usually get four or five years out of one before something happens to it. In very cold weather, I have seen a little skim of ice uh, form on, on part of the trough part there where the birds would be getting their water from. But it's always open enough that they can get water. And when I go in the coop, I just scoop that little bit of ice out. I'm, I've always been very pleased with them. There are a lot of people talk about using other things, uh, heated dog bowls and things like that. Might work very good. I don't know. I've never used it. This is what I've always used. In summer, I switched to the non-electric variety just to save wear and tear on the electric ones because they are a lot more expensive. And as I said, I usually get four or five years out of, out of each one, so I think they're a good investment. Well, I hope that answered most of your questions, if you're planning to get chickens. If I haven't answered a question that you have in mind, by all means, put it in the comments below, and if I can, I'll answer it. The only thing I can say is I have never regretted it for a moment. Um, right now, I'm letting my older birds just die out of natural causes, and as they do, I'm replacing them with bantams, because that seems to be my fancy at the moment anyway. One of the uh, comments made in the original, well, not comment, statement, I guess, made in the original question that got me started on this little video, planning to get uh, laying hens and some guinea fowl. Well, I wish you luck with the guinea fowl. I know many people don't have any problem with them at all. I would love to have them again. They're wonderful, especially now with so many problems with ticks, because they're known for eating ticks, hundreds of them a day if they can find them. But my problem with, with them in the past was I could never let them out to free range. Mine never wanted to go back in the coop. Now, some people say they haven't had a problem with that at all. I don't know... I don't think I raised mine from young ones, which might have been the problem. I think mine were given to me by somebody else, and they were adult birds when I received them. But they didn't want to go back in the coop, and they would roost in the top of tall spruce trees on my property, which you think would be okay. However, the miserable raccoons found them. And one at a time, they would climb the tree and, and get them, and eventually I had no guinea fowl left. So it probably makes a great deal of difference if you buy guinea keats, the, the little chicks, and, and raise them. I've had various people telling me that they never had that problem. Anyway, if you have questions, please feel free to ask them. And thank you very much for watching. I hope this was at least a little bit of a help.